spin out to remove your own door? And just trashing that Aston Martin right out of the gate in a chase scene set piece that's also right out of the gate. All inside two minutes. A bold move to set up door off continuity for the rest of this chase. And I'm gonna hit on this a few times, but the sound design in this movie is sublime. The engine sounds from changing gears, totally overpowering everything else to drop us into the chase from afar. Seeing high performance vehicles getting pushed to the test is always cool. Nobody who actually owns an Aston Martin is gonna rip it through a quarry. So again, a new look at Bond. Filthy car, broken glass, no pristine highway, it's dirt and gravel. Yes, two cars flying off cliffs in the first four minutes. This is why we're here. It's time to get out. If you saw Casino Royale and remember who Mr. White is, you're like, oh snap, Mr. White was in the trunk that whole time? And if you didn't see Casino Royale or don't remember who Mr. White is, you're like, oh snap, some guy was trapped in the trunk that whole time? So it's a win-win. But even those of you who forgot how Casino Royale ended, it's clear we're picking up right where we left off. Just a title that oozes high society, high class, high mindedness, quantum. Solace. Uh, ah, I remember because he shot him in the leg last movie. Damn, Judy Dench always looks incredible. You look like hell. When's the last time you slept? More M burns. Which is why I did a DNA check on a lock of his hair found in Vesper's apartment. A lock of his hair. I wouldn't have thought Vesper the sentimental type. We never really know anyone, do we? And now M's dropping life lessons? But also, we're exposing Bond's true feelings here and how it's just easier for him to believe Vesper didn't love anyone. He's not important, and neither was she. Yeah, okay, Bondy baby. You didn't legit retire for her. We definitely didn't see through it last movie. But he's dead. And we totally buy it now. It's clear, Mom. It's not. Wouldn't be a Bond movie without some spectacles, so enter Il Palio. A horse race with 10 bareback riders and horses. What more do you need? You really don't know anything about us. Based on what's happening to you and who shows up in Spectre, I'm not even sure you know anything about you. The first thing you should know about us is that we have people everywhere. Am I right? And nothing says scary villain organization like already having a guy on the inside. I think one of the fundamental staples of Craig Bond that I enjoy is how imperfect he actually is. He's constantly adapting, his plan never plays out as he intended, and sometimes it hurts, which is another solid carryover from Casino Royale. I've heard some people say this movie is too front-loaded with two chase scenes in the first 15 minutes. Those people are wrong, this rules. And fun fact, Daniel Craig did this stunt. CGI or not, this shot is killer. Love the way the camera falls with them. Also, they smash into a lot of glass. Is anyone just exhausted watching this? How are these men still moving? This fight concept alone, battling among ropes and scaffolding, is magnificent. The tension of the pistol being just out of reach? Ha! No cut to where the bullet landed because we already know if Bond isn't moving, he hit his mark. I'm not sure any other single shot of Daniel Craig captures his take on Bond so expertly. All the emotion, poise, rage, skill, and PTSD as he hangs upside down and dispatches his enemy. And it's not the first time we've pushed in on Bond rather than his target. When someone says we've got people everywhere, you expect it to be hyperbole. Doesn't mean that they've got somebody working for them inside the bloody room. <laughs> I am pointing out the absurdity. The talented Rory Kinnear making his film debut as a somewhat classic Bond character, Bill Tanner. Have you ever noticed when someone recommends Black Mirror, they'll tell you about the social media episode or the eye recording one, even 15 million merits? Ah, they ignore that first one, the national anthem. I wonder if he regrets being in that episode as much as I regret watching it. Ooh, hear the Bond theme on the distorted guitar? Again, this sound design is so on point. The silence cut by the switchblade coming out and then just the soft sounds of the beads being picked up straight into a loud, crashing, brutal hand-to-hand -hand fight with no score. Woof. Stab to the carotid, casual stab to the femoral. Bleeding out seems awful, but at least at the hands of Bond, it'll happen quick-ish. Plus, you might get to stare into his baby blues. Get in. What? Get in. All right. <laughs> Barely any hesitation. I mean, if Olga Kurylenko tells you to get into the car, what are you gonna do, argue? I think someone wants to kill you. Bond's mildly amused that someone is trying to kill Camille because people are always trying to kill him. Aw, they have so much in common. 22 movies in, and I think this might be the coolest trick I've seen Bond do. Ingenuity. Slate was a dead end. Damn him, he killed him. Oh, she knows him so well. I mean, it's Bond, you gotta have weird henchmen. Some of them get metal teeth, some get sharp hats, some are dudes named Elvis with a real high bolt cut toupee. I think I'm starting to like you. So you did just try and have me killed. And that made me very sad. Honesty? Also, Green is a Bond villain with no identifiable marker. Just off-putting facial expressions and a special kind of disdain for, like, 
being decent. I got so angry. I took an iron. Genius piece of writing here. We're meeting Green as the bad guy, and he kind of comes off like a sweaty loser, but then he tells the story, and we don't even need him to finish it. What did he do with the iron? Don't know. Pretty sure I don't want to know. It was bad, and he's wormy and scary, and I don't like him. Solid Bond villain. And it's probably racist to say so, but I think his accent makes him more terrifying, too. Not a lot of Northeastern American Bond villains, and that might, that might be by the by sign. No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. Because I'm going to make you drink some Dunkin' Donuts, or what's, what is the Northeast known for? Like, I'm going to raise your cholesterol by giving you too many lobster rolls. Ah, good to see Donetta walking around looking so healthy. You won't find oil there. Maybe. Maybe not. One of the first misdirects of this film is that the power struggle is about oil, not water. Just promise me to drop her over the side when you're done. Just in general, this movie's doing a great job of making me want the bad guys to die. Another moment where the camera sticks to the bike. Love it. Helpfulness? What? He saved her from being a cold-blooded murderer. So director Mark Forrester made sure to have four big action sequences, each representing one of the four elements, earth with the quarry scene, water with this boat scene, and later air for the airplane scene, and fire for the hotel and fire scene. Sadly, he didn't include a heart action sequence, so Captain Planet was never summoned. Boat explosion! Are we sure Bond isn't the villain here? He stole some poor person's Bronco, he rode his bike onto these guys' boats, and he didn't really respect the no-wake zone at the slip. All Green did was something with an iron. I'm not dwelling on the past, I don't think you should either. You killed him. That delivery says it all. License to kill doesn't mean a requirement to kill, James. Green's been doing a lot of philanthropic work buying up large tracts of land for ecological preserves. Tracts of land, you say? Are they huge? Tracks of land? New government gives America the least any oil found. CIA oil. Wow, let's keep it real here, movie. <laughs> David Harbour doesn't even care. I know you'd have expected that last week, but last week everything he did was likable. This is not. You don't need another Marxist giving national resources to the people, do you? And speaking of last week, I think that's exactly what the Red Guardian needs. Might want to peep them nuktats. This is such a wonderfully awkward moment. It really is impressive how some actors can turn a lack of understanding of social cues into villainy. I love that one of James Bond's greatest spy skills is just walking confidently into places he doesn't belong. Ma, ah, cool, an airpiece. Wait, what What letter is that? Oh, oh no. Oh, quantum, it's for, it's for quantum. We're good. <laughs> you can hear all the nitpickers going, what? Plot hole, how did Bond get a bag? Oh, never mind. I don't know a whole lot about opera, but based on the giant mechanical moving eye, this interpretation of Puccini's Tosca seems pretty tight. But when they find out that they've been duped, I'm working on that. Ain't nobody should trust you, Dyatlov. This is the world's most precious resource. We need to control as much of it as we can. If you know anything about natural resources, the reveal that it's water and not oil would be spoiled. Luckily, it wasn't spoiled for me as I get my news from Highlights Magazine. But let me tell you, I almost always sometimes find some of the hidden images. I really think you people should find a better place to meet. Where do you think you're going? Mr. White showing he knows how to villain better than the rest of these suckers. Well, Tosca isn't for everyone. Solid stare down and dialogue free exchange. I can't say if Green is terrified or furious and that works to his advantage. You know, I, I wanna read into why they picked Tosca as the opera, but I think this is pretty much it. There's a motif in this movie that lends itself to a problem I know some had, the quick cuts, but often the quick cuts are cutting back and forth from the bond action to the setting and location action. <laughs> And again, the sound design here. The opera music from the death of Scarpia at high volume while the screaming, gunshots, and chaos of reality fade in and out, going back and forth from being right up front to sounding almost underwater. Drop it. Could you do me a favor? You're gonna get a phone call in a minute. Would you mind telling them I'm headed for Cairo? I'd be happy to. Thank you. Confidently walking into places he doesn't belong is obviously second to batting his baby blues and getting people to say anything he wants. Sua mamma mi ha fatto imprigionare, poi mi ha fatto anche torturare. Tu adesso che fai? Gli servi del vino? È un vino qualsiasi. <laughs> Stingy burn. But I guess when one's young, it seems very easy to distinguish between right and wrong. But as one gets older, the villains and the heroes get all mixed up. Now Mathis is dropping truth bombs up in this piece. And it stings a little extra when he's been the quintessential example of that, constantly paying for other people's sins. You don't know him? Should I? I suppose not. You haven't been keeping secrets as long as I have. That's just a solid line. No matter how veteran Bond is, there's always someone more experienced. May I fix your drink, sir? What are you drinking? I don't know. What am I drinking? Three measures of Gordon's gin, one of vodka, half a measure of quinoa. Really? 
Shaken well until it is ice cold, then served with a large, thin slice of lemon peel. So it's the same exact drink from Casino Royale, meaning he had to have ordered it, and Mathis finishes the order because he was in the room the first time Bond ordered it. Also, Kina Lele doesn't exist anymore, so probably just a fun nod to that fact. It didn't exist during Casino Royale either. The bartender would have replaced it with Lele Blanc. But it was the original order from Fleming's 1952 novel, and now you know way more than you ever could want about the Vesper Martini. But this whole thing does throw a wrench in my idea that his drink order was always for someone else's ears. But because I still like that idea, I think his repressed love and heartache over Vesper would super Proceed his nonchalance about what kind of martini he gets, right? It's good, it's good, right? So the point is that either way, Craig Bond is an expectation subversion Bond. Not only does he not suavely say vodka martini shaken not stirred, he's also clearly sloshed. You're going nowhere. So shoot me, I'd rather stay in a morgue. It's sort of funny that Bond gets away with being a snob because he's an assassin. Like he's earned it somehow by murdering people while wearing a $3,000 suit. Come on. Almost my esteros on any sabbatical. Confidence. And another call back to this moment in Casino Royale. Your name, sir? James Bond. You'll find the reservation on the beach. The guy in the $4,000 suit doesn't have to worry what people think. Come on. Daniel Craig's workout routine. Something that, along with those baby blues, plays into this working. I can't find the, um, the stationery. You come and help me look. Huh. I stand corrected. I am Captain Planet. I cut down the forest. You'll excuse us? Nice. <laughs> Help us to the conversation rescue. Felix just chillin', looking casual and relaxed as all get out. Jeffrey Wright is always a win. Good evening. And now Elvis is drinking a pina colada? This guy is my kind of henchman. I'm sorry, Mr. Green, but we have to go. Please, my friends call me Dominic. I'm sure they do. Ooh, Bond with the sass. That's Bond for, I'm not your friend, buddy. How much do you know about Bond, Camille? Everything he touches seems to wither and die. I mean, he's not wrong. But that's green for, I'm not your buddy, guy. Oh my gosh. Ooh, come on now, Fields. No need to embarrass the guy. After all, it's not fair when you have innocent, attractive lady plot armor. He's wearing sunglasses at night and pulls the gun before the trunk is even fully open to see the corpse. I guess I appreciate that he's not even pretending to not be a dirty cop. She gave everything for you. Forgive her. Forgive yourself. Love that Bond stays with Mathis and love what Mathis says to Bond. It's a sentimental move that once again shows us Craig Bond has a hard time separating his emotions from his job because he's not the sexy murder robot we've assumed Bond should be. He's actually human. Buenos dias. Shady Bolivian pilots don't even care if your $5,000 suit is covered in blood. Come on. Never gonna complain about a fun plane chase and dogfight. One-sided dogfight? What's it called when only one of the planes has weapons? Trick question! Bond always has a weapon. Also, plane explosion! Look, I'm not a physics expert, and that probably would have killed them, but I appreciate that the landing was still super hard, even though movie logic can sometimes be that pulling the chute anywhere before the ground means a soft landing. Generosity with a $6,300 suit, come on! He's dynamite. That's a drill hole in case you're wondering. You have to drill down into the rock to blast it. And the reveal. Believe it or not, the privatization of water has been a real issue in Bolivia. In the late 90s, early 2000s, private companies bought Bolivia's water supply and charged the citizens for collecting it. Even the rain. In fact, there was an award-winning movie about it called Even the Rain. I hope you can trust these men. Ooh, bond burn. When you can't tell your friends from your enemies, it's time to go. This back and forth is yet another example of why Dame Judi Dench staying on from the Brosnan Bond years is such a great call. Acting has never been the draw for the Bond films, but she always brings the goods. Dame Judi Dench is always a win. Uh, should we talk about how the Bond films treat women? Not today. This was such a gut punch the first time I saw it because it breaks those rules I joked about earlier. And yeah, next week's takes it to a whole new tragic level, but this sucks just to make a reference to Goldfinger. We'll call it a draw since it's an interesting way to update the classic imagery and it put Gemma Arterton on the map. Look how well your charm works, James. They'll do anything for you, won't they? How many is that now? Oof, Em laying down another truth sandwich. Not sure where Bond would be without her. <laughs> Dang, look at how limber Bond is. I guess that's what you get in a suit for seven grand. Get in. Yep, still no arguments. I can't trust a damn thing around here. CIA irony. It would impress me the way you boys calm this place up. I'll take that as a compliment coming from a Brit. Zing, it's like an IRL version of the Spider-Man pointing meme, but like for overreaching intelligence agencies. And dang it, look at Jeffrey Wright's beautiful beard. Bond showing even more great clearance in those $2,600 pants. Explosion shadowing. Hey, it's Rob Stark's wife. Hopefully things fare better for her this time. Oh, crap. We'll use us as utilities provider. 
This is double what we are paying now. And not so fun fact in this Stranger Than Fiction story beat, the Bond villain's plan is maybe only slightly less evil than the real life where the price hike was more. Uh, you should know something about me and the people I work with. Decide not to sign, you will wake up with your balls in your mouth and your willing replacement standing over you. You doubt that, then shoot me. Take that money and have a good night's sleep. Man, Green sure makes the people he works with seem like something that haunts or perturbs the mind. <laughs> Hardcore parkour! You and I had a mutual friend! Now that's a Bond entrance. Looks awesome, gets an equip, kills a guy immediately. Well, even henchmen I love have to die at some point. Wait, did it blow his clothes off? Oh, I to totally blew his clothes off. Building explosion! I sort of love how unhinged Green is here. He's screaming, his wild attacks. He's a terrible fighter and he owns it, which almost takes Bond off guard. What a weird, sweaty little dude. I guess we know what he did with the iron. Turns out she didn't really need Bond's advice since emotion won the day. But part of you's not gonna believe the training because this kill is personal. And clearly out of our two heroes, Camille definitely has the harder task, but she's bringing the pain to Madrano, and I'm not mad about it. A brutal, but actually super common injury with axes, so also realism. Sounds like you just lost another one. Big character development for Bond here. He thinks Camille might be dead, but instead of letting his rage take over, he pulls him up by his hair, but he does his job for the moment. Yeah, I'd imagine if your family died in a fire, being stuck in one as an adult would be pretty dramatic. Take a deep breath. Sure, he's ripped, he's cool, and he's handsome, but Daniel Craig's acting is why he's the best Bond. The moment of realization that he and Camille are going to die and he's not gonna let her die by her worst fear is just, he doesn't even say anything, just top-notch face acting. <laughs> Where are you going? You're only going a short distance, walk or ride a bike. Oh, my bad, he was just listening to Mati and Captain Planet. The power is yours. I bet you make it 20 miles before you consider drinking that. Brutal. But I mean, uh, it does look refreshing. It's weird marketing. Coppins for the water stealing guy, though. I don't think the dead care about vengeance. And now Bond coming in with the life lessons. Sure, they kiss, but Camille is such a different Bond girl. There was never really any sexual tension between them. What united them was their need for vengeance. I love that it's not forced. But your priest is in there. Ah, <sighs> and letting his PPK into the light. A shot reminiscent of how we were introduced to Bond. Good book end scene. I assume you have no regrets. I don't. What about you? Of course not. That would be unprofessional. Seriously, just tattoo that on my chest next to Dame Judi Dench's face. Congratulations, you were right. About what? About Vespa. Another way in which Craig Bond is a little different. He admits he was wrong. And in doing so, he, wait for it, finds a quantum of solace. That's right, folks. This movie wasn't about some organization. It was Bond finding a discreet amount of comfort that Vesper really did love him and traded her life for his. A very different ending from this one. But he's dead. I need you back. I never left. And just a solid way to end these two films. Bond didn't kill Yusuf because he's chosen to put his job above his feelings. And it really means he's emotionally shutting himself down to an almost certainly unhealthy degree that I'm sure will never be an issue in the future. I think the thing I enjoy most about Quantum of Solace is actually something that may have only happened because of the writer's strike. It doesn't pretend like Casino Royale didn't happen. With a few minor exceptions, that's the usual formula for Bond, and while it's generally fine, it also lowers the stakes. At this point, we're so used to the interconnectedness of the MCU, starting this movie a few minutes after Casino Royale feels right. And look, as much as Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland hate to make canon material, it's always my favorite stuff. Self-contained stories can be fun, but I want to see Rick deal with the consequences of his actions occasionally. For all I know, Pierce Brosnan could be playing an entirely new James Bond in every one of his films. Okay, maybe that's, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration. But Craig Bond has a measurable change over the course of even these two movies. You can chalk that up to different writers, but it plays into the idea that Vesper was his one true love, and he will never fully recover from her loss. I mean, he mostly stops smiling in this movie. Dominic Green gets the most hate out of anything else in this movie, and while I totally understand where everyone is coming from, I don't know, he's a change from the norm? And not just in his appearance or abilities, but that he's, like, real? Oddly enough, even more real now than in 2008? Performative environmentalism is like a staple for CEOs and corporations in the 2020s. And the sinister truth that he's actually making things a whole crap ton worse behind the scenes of his fundraiser for pandas or whatever is almost too on the nose. Obviously, the fact they chose a real-life event doesn't hurt. The Bolivian water crisis was serious news at the time, and yet plenty of folks around the world, myself included, had no idea it was happening. But they also didn't go over the top with it and call the film Drought Another Day, or Tomorrow Never Drowns, or Waterworld is Not Enough, or Doctor No You Can't Have Any Water. They just brought a modern news story, Water Raker, Aquifers Are Forever, I'm sorry. 
They just brought a modern news story into the plot and it works. And like I said, the reality of what happened in Bolivia is way more twirly mustache evil villain than what they did in this film. Look it up and prepare to get super bummed. H2O finger for your drinks only. Okay, I'm done. I love the cast as much as ever. Olga was a really great addition, especially considering that she didn't fall into the typical Bond girl tropes. I enjoyed this movie even more than I remembered, and I never really disliked it that much. It was the completion of Casino Royale while also building up to something much bigger, which I admit is an odd choice for a standalone movie, but it works for me. Next week, Thunder Squall. I mean, Octopus C. C. Octo C. Just kidding, it's Waterfall. I mean, Blonde Bartum. Now is not the time for fear. That comes later.